This is my first attempt at 3D printing a body for one of my RC trucks. And it's been kind of a pain in the ass, really. Uh, I'm not a very good 3D printer, I don't think. Um, I have a Ender 3 S1 Pro, and for the most part, it's done pretty good. This uh, file here for this E350 was found on Colt's 3D website, and uh, it was like two to three millimeters bigger than my build plate allowed for. So I had to split it in half. All right, you can see that seam all the way down the middle. Originally, it came with one, two, three, four, five sections, and I turned it into ten sections to get it to fit. And all of them, for the most part, printed great, except for uh, these two right here. And I guess it's a problem with the file itself. Because it, each of these took like, I did it in a, like, what do you call it, super quality. So like 0 0.12 layer height. Uh, and all of them printed great, I think. Except for this piece. And I think this piece. And that is, for some reason, and it didn't show up in Kira or uh, even... Tinkercad, this seam right here, and this seam right here. They don't show up, but like it doesn't print. Like it's just a separation of layers. So it's like perforated almost. And I printed this one. God, I don't know. I went through a whole spool of filament trying to get this print right. And it didn't mess up until, uh, you know, right here. So I'm talking like 20 hours in, this thing right here would just mess up the whole rest of it. Or this piece right here would mess up the rest of it. So that sucked. Like, bad. I eventually had to do it in a uh, different color and a lower quality to even figure out what was causing that print line. And like I said, I'm not a very good printer, but I think this is not my fault at all. I had to go back in and like beef up all sorts of stuff and Tinkercad. Uh, anyways, just throwing that out there. These seams are not me. So these two right here are printed in 0.16, like dynamic quality, I guess. I think it's 0.16 layer height. You can't tell too much. These seams definitely suck, so that's going to take a lot of... Feeling. Uh, I'm going to eventually just turn this into like an expedition overland build. Probably put it on a TRX4 chassis. I think that's what the file said it was best fit. And I got a couple TRX4 axles and transmission, so. I'll have to get on Jenny's, order a chassis, and all the plastic parts. I don't know the best way to mount this yet. Uh, this video is just going to be for the body work. Or most of the body work. We'll see how many parts I end up doing this in. The file calls for um, screws to be able to mount these uh, halves together. These pieces. I don't know if I'm going to do that. That seems like a lot of weight. And again, I had to add a bunch of these because it wouldn't fit on my printer so I cut it in half and then had to add a bunch of those little loops there bolt holes or whatever you want to call them so right now I'm just using toothpicks and I think I might keep the toothpicks just glue them in there I don't know I figure it's got to be lighter than screws we'll see I'll, I'll try a couple screw holes and see how it works but yeah I'm gonna start doing the body work on this just kind of show you where I'm at stay tuned so I'm just roughing up the edges with some uh, sandpaper I think this is like 60 grit 80 grit 
just whatever I had on hand. Roughing up the edges, and then I'll put super glue down, and uh, I'm using the toothpicks for alignment. So far, so good. First round of sanding is done. And I kind of plastic welded the inside. Some of the bigger gaps I filled with uh, just a piece of uh, filament and my soldering iron with a flat tip on it. And other pieces I just kind of smeared together. But yeah, still got some big gaps here. Like I said, these two um, pieces printed terrible. And I just read online that some other people had the ex exact same experience where at least this one was really off. So I'm gonna use uh, some Bondo spot putty for some of these bigger gaps. Like that one right there. Same on this side. And then I'll probably use some uh, Tamiya white putty. That works pretty good and is easy to sand and uh, so is plastic filler, like a plastic wood filler from like Home Depot. I don't have any out here, I don't think. But yeah, that, one's, that stuff's pretty easy to sand too. Yeah, so there you go. First round of sanding. So this is two rounds of uh, filler, bonder, bondo. Right there, that stuff right there. It's like six bucks at Walmart. So far, so good. I'm gonna go ahead and spray some primer on it. Filler primer, also from Walmart. I think it's like seven or eight bucks. And that will show me everywhere I missed. I already know there's a few spots that I'm just not gonna be able to get. And like I said, this is a uh, not, I don't wanna say it was a bad file. Uh, it had some problems in it. And also, I'm not a great printer using a beginner printer. So there's that. So I'm gonna have some, some stuff. Like that. Looks rough, feels smooth, I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. The uh, first coat of primer will definitely show us. This is after I uh, used that filler uh, primer and uh, I sanded it. Light sanded with, what is this? 400 grit. And I still got some spots to fill, like this right here uh, the grill still has some spots a couple others just some they're just gonna be there like some of these seams I can't get rid of that well but that's okay real trucks and cars have seams especially a van like this Looking good though. Um, just a, one more attempt at filling uh, gaps and line marks and stuff. Uh, I'm going to use some of this plastic wood mixed with acetone. Uh, just if you do that, uh, it makes it real thin and the acetone evaporates real quick. Now, if you're not careful, that acetone will melt your plastic and strip your paint and stuff. Um, I did it on this babam I'm working on. I printed that out and uh, it worked really good. You know, I put it on there, the acetone and plastic wood, uh, sanded it smooth, primed it, did it again, sanded it smooth, primed it, sanded it smooth, all that stuff. Uh, turned out pretty good. This is in work, so. Not totally finished, but 
you can see the letter lines but not from afar you know not bad especially like uh, on the grill it's gonna need some just to get rid of all those 3d printer marks all right let me mix it up and I'll show you and you just want it kind of thin and that acetone will evaporate pretty fast and there you go there's the grill this stuff is very easy to sand and with it being thinned out like that it's pretty easy to brush into gaps all right i'm going to cover the whole van in this thing i'm not going to show it because i hate doing how-to videos i just you don't want to hear me breathing heavy and cursing and stuff all right i'll show you afterwards all right there it is Hopefully this is the last time I have to do this, but we'll see. I'll keep doing it as long as I have to. Uh, after this, I'll sand it, spray it again with filler primer, and then sand it again, and then I'll, I'll use some brown primer. That way, when it rusts, or when it uh, gets scratches, it looks like rust, kind of. Uh, if I were to do this again, I would get brown uh, PETG filament just for that same effect so that when it gets scratched up bottom layer you know the base layer is brown already this one's black but it'll be all right all right stay tuned so that is after the plastic filler or plastic wood filler now spray it again with some primer same primer just keep repeating the process till it's totally smooth you know so that's it for the gray primer I uh, had a couple spots to fill like right there right there a little bit on the grill uh, now I'm gonna do brown primer a few coats of brown primer probably that way when it gets uh, scratched up it'll look like rust in theory I guess after the gray, I gave it a light sanding with 800 grit. Looking good so far. So that's it, brown primer. Uh, all the body work is done. Looks pretty good. I don't see any visible like print layers or lines like that. Nothing too bad. The only thing that I can see is like this right here. Just where the, where it like, uh, when you print something and it bows out a little bit called like elephant foot. Uh, sometimes, which I couldn't get rid of, but that's okay. I don't think it's going to stand out too much. Everything else turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm going to stop there. Uh, so that I could, uh, I don't want to give it the final paint job until it's ready to go on the body. Like, I got to figure out how to mount it, which I was thinking about using the clipless uh, body mount system like the uh, new TRX-4s have. I don't know, though. If it's too complicated, I might just use magnets. There's plenty of those files on Thingiverse. Magnets, maybe some Velcro or something. This is not going to be a... Uh, like a full out use all the time beater trail truck this one's mostly gonna look cool till I get it all figured out uh, so once I figure out all the mounting tires I might have to you know arch these wheels out a little bit cut those out figure out bumpers all that stuff then I will give it a final paint job and glue in the windows which I'm kind of nervous about I've never done that before I'd hate to give this thing a rad paint job and then windows make it look like dookie all right let me figure out the, the chassis situation for those that don't know uh, there's a website called Jenny's RC and uh, they buy brand new RC cars and part them out and you can get them pretty good prices uh, you can put together TRX4 pretty cheap if you already have electronics and stuff which I got bunches of electronics. Nothing great, but 
some of theirs all right and I got uh, axles and transmissions and stuff from previous trades and projects and whatnot the chassis part you know these links are like eleven dollars on Jenny's uh, all the plastics for a 21 Bronco I think this is twenty two dollars uh, I got this frame from a buddy but they sell the chassis rails for I think like five or six dollars so you can put together a TRX4 pretty easily and pretty budget you know budget friendly so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get some of this piece together as much as I can right now and then uh, we'll see where I go from there and there you go a mostly assembled 21 Bronco TRX4 chassis I need some shocks and drive shafts uh, these are the bumpers off my defender that I didn't use there was a little bit of parts left over just transmission and skid stuff which I probably will still need that motor mount there and housing uh, that deal from Jenny's though is real good. Here's I still got stuff left over from when I built my Defender. Uh, this is stuff from my Sport. All the plastics. Like that is all the plastics left over. It's pretty heavy from uh, when you put a TRX4 Sport on a Enjora chassis. That's everything you don't need. And I've probably picked through that too so it's probably even heavier at one point uh yeah that deal uh jenny's you know they sell drive shafts and they sell bumpers the bumpers are separate from the plastics kit but yeah that's a good deal man all right here we go here's some progress on this thing uh this is taking me forever so in between clips it could be days weeks or months who knows it's taking me a while uh, this is where it's sitting at right now uh, I finished the chassis for the most part it, it rolls I can put a battery in it and drive it and everything here it is sitting on the chassis still no uh, no way to secure it yet I'm, I'm working on that though some bumpers I had to design in Tinkercad I'm gonna cut all this off Do a little clearance for these. I think I'm gonna start running with these uh, four three swampers. I don't know. I might try some four two tusk out or something, or crawlers actually. But we'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut to fit these, not these wheels. But I'm not gonna use those. Those are cheap plastic wheels. But uh, probably we'll start with these tires. Here's the rear bumper. I designed in Tinkercad. I'm gonna cut everywhere it's marked X. I'm gonna cut off. Let's see. It fits pretty good. Like that is a. Uh, that's just fitting with the bumpers. No magnets. No nothing. Check this out. See, like it's on there pretty good. Right. Hold on. I'll show you. So I ended up having to use 79 Bronco fenders, inner fenders. They were wider than the 21 Bronco and that uh, just fits better. Like inside here are these uh, part where you put the pieces together, where you glue them together. Focus. And uh, these just fit perfect right underneath this lip. So it's like kind of holds it in pretty good, both sides. And for mounting, I am going to try magnets. These are not the strongest magnets. But they're not bad. I just need something to kind of keep it down. It really doesn't move side to side because of how I did the, the, did the bumpers. So it just slides in there. 
these bumpers I uh, I just did like 10% infill because I printed good lord did I print a bunch trying to figure this out those are all the ones I printed uh, I think these are all rears I know that's a front trying to figure out the bumper situation print some see if it works see what fits now these are like 10% just because I kept printing a bunch so I will eventually print those much higher or much better maybe some carbon fiber or something or carbon infused PETG uh, these magnetic mounts I still got to glue them in I found those on Thinkverse they were kind of flimsy so I beefed them up some and uh, these magnets are not the strongest but I had them on hand so we're gonna try those first if not I'll go to a uh, bigger magnet and like I said really you just need to have it sitting in place like um, what else I can't remember where I left off it's been so long since I filmed this I will probably order some of those uh, GRC high clearance knuckles like brass knuckles they're pretty cheap now on ally express i got the uh 1080 in here i gotta figure all that mounting all that out just to brush stock tracks this motor um yeah i got that squared away so we're now we're gonna see if we can't glue these magnets in and uh see how that goes hopefully the next video this thing's running around with a secure body on it all right all right magnets are dry and in the front it works like I can lift it all the way off the ground before it gives out then it gives out the back and I think it's just probably because of leverage but it'll take nothing to come off the back I'm uh I'm gonna run up to Home Depot and see if they have stronger magnets. And if not, I kinda got a plan B and I might just go with this anyways. These pieces here that I cut out, I still have. So I might just glue them back in and then keep the rear in, taking that bumper on and off. We'll see. All right, the front is all trimmed up. Match the bumper lines pretty good. And I wanted to go to the door seam. But still, these are only four threes. Uh, still rub a little bit. I don't think I can go much more. Like these are soft too. All right, start the rear. All right, front and rear is trimmed up now to match the bumpers. Give me some clearance. Still nervous about the front. See, like, I don't want to get too far into the door. I don't remember. Have I mentioned I hate doing how-to videos? I don't remember if I covered what I did on the magnets. The magnets, I had to get uh, slightly bigger magnets. Um, those right there from Home Depot, like seven bucks. But it's in there. Like I can pick up the whole thing. Side to side is covered by the the way the bumpers fit on and how it's cut. Like, there's the front. Here's the rear. That sucker's on there good. Pick up the whole thing. All right. I got to print these bumpers better. This is just like 10% for testing. So I'll see about getting some uh, nylon PETG. 
do higher infill. This is dust, man. We've just been grinding these this body off, all this plastic. We've gone from having microplastic in my body to having macroplastic in my body. All right. All right, I think this is where I'm gonna end the video. Uh, just do this in multiple parts, just so it's not an hour long. The chassis is pretty much ready. I gotta get some brass parts, but that's, you don't need a video on that. Uh, I did swap out to a Fusion SE, and uh, that's about it, really. The magnets are taken care of. This is about ready for paint. There you go. That's it sitting on the chassis and pretty much ride height. I need some stiffer springs too. And definitely some different inserts because these are a little soft. But yeah. Alright, I think I'm going to end this video right there. Can't wait for this to be done. It's been pretty fun. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.